and thereby me be defiled. And when I say a broken heart, not broken as broken hearted like in weeping, and, uh, but I'm talking about one that is broken as far as hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. It's not touched with the feeling of the infirmities of the people as our Lord's heart was. It does not weep over the condition of our city. It does not weep over the condition of our country. It has an arrogant, proud thing. Let me tell you how we fix this problem. Let me say the problem's not the problem. Our heart is the problem. If we weep before God, humble ourselves before the under the mighty hand of God, if we humble ourselves, cry, and weep, then God, by grace, will give us grace. Amen. And may He show Himself mighty and deliver our country. Mm -hmm. Say, I don't believe that. You need to read Nehemiah. When he heard of his city, he wept certain days. He fasted certain days. He had a broken heart because his heart was not broken. You'll catch on to that. What's news from your heart? Anger about sin or anguish over sin? Does it hurt your heart? Does it break your heart? If our heart does not break, it's because our heart is broken. Do the bands of wickedness in the lives of sinful souls and struggling saints bring it to fury? Or does it bring it to fastings? God says it's not the fast I have cho chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and let them and, 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 and that you break every yoke? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry and that, that thou, thou bring the poor that are cast out into thy house? When thou seest the naked that you co that you cover, that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh, then shall thy light break forth as in the morning, and thy hell shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee, and the glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Mm -hmm. Then shall thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. When our heart Breaks because our heart is not hard. When it brings us to fastness and not to cure. Oh, the design of a fixed heart is first of all recognizing that your heart is broken. Naturally, your heart is the secret of all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Most people want to say that people are good naturally. They don't know people. Come on. They don't even know their own self. Mm -hmm. They're the ones who think, hey, it's okay for me to drive fast and get up on somebody's bumper, try to get around them so when we get past that other vehicle, I can zip around them. And it, but when somebody gets on my bumper, I'm going to punch my brakes a little bit to sit there and make them back down. And they say, it's all right for me to do it, but it's not all right for them to do it. I'm going to get an attitude when, they, when they're doing their thing. But when I do the same thing, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me you don't have that attitude you think it's okay for you to speed, but it's not okay for that other guy to speed. It's okay for me to go 10 miles over the speed limit, but when that guy runs up on my bumper at 20 miles over the speed limit, you're still breaking the law. Why not go 20 miles over the speed limit instead of 10 miles over the speed limit if you want to break the law anyway? So I can't afford the ticket. Oh! That's right. Oh! So you're going to let man's law dictate to you because you're fearful instead of the love of Christ dictate to you. What about that? Your heart's not right within you. I 
tell you this, we want to make our, we want to say people are naturally good and make ourselves feel good because uh, about ourselves. We think they, they made a choice to go back. And to some degree they did. But to some degree it's just their nature. You have an old nature. You have an old heart that's the secret of all things in destiny. That's right. Do not deny it. Recognize your heart is broken. And you can see it because you're not broken hearted. Your heart is broken, sinner. Your heart is broken. Your natural heart is broken, dear saint. It needs to be fixed. If you do not recognize your need, you'll never go and get it dealt with. I had some health concerns. I went to the doctor, and the doctor said, you need to do this, you need to do that, and you need to do this other thing. And I did this, and I did that, and I did this other thing. You know what? I don't have those health problems. Mm -hmm. I may have health problems, but they're not manifesting themselves in any way. I live a certain way to prevent and protect me from certain things. I'm just trying to get you to understand. You know you need to recognize there's a problem, first of all. Secondly, your broken heart ought to break your heart. I have a heart that is broken, and I can't fix it. Mm. Mm. In me, as in myself, what a no good thing. How am I going to fix what's broken when there's nothing in me that is able to fix what's broken? That ought to break your heart. My family is broken. My friends are broken and I can't fix it. That ought to break your heart. Even my foe is broken, my enemy. And I can't fix it. If you like having enemies, there's something wrong with you. No wonder it's easier to kill them than it is to win them. You say, why? Because you can't fix it. So you wipe them out. Mm -hmm. But if you can fix it, oh, even your enemies would be at peace with you. What about that? That's good Bible word. I cannot explain that. But I can say it's the Bible. And I live on that. That I can sit there and live away. That even those who don't like me cannot say anything truthfully bad about me. What about that? Wouldn't that be something? When they talk about you, they sit there and say, I don't like you. And then they say, and then they get mad and they start getting all worked up. And then they have to say, Well, he's always been friendly to me. He's never done me really wrong. I just don't like him because he's so, so he's holier than that. What do you mean by that? I don't like him because he's always talking about Jesus. What's wrong with that? I don't like him because he gave some money to somebody who he didn't even know to help them get, get some stuff. And he didn't give me nothing. Come on, you're still. I don't like him because he does good things. You say, people can't be like that. What do you think they crucified Jesus for? Come on, come on. All he did was go about doing good and they crucified him because they envy. Because people liked him and they didn't like them. Mm -hmm. They fell under bondage to them. Mm -hmm. And let me say this. I have to stop for a second. Don't think you like somebody just because they sound good. You better get to know him before you say, oh yes, I like him. 
Because some of them are angry men. And the Bible says, make not a friend of angry men. They're angry because, why do you not have any friends? Why is everybody against them? You ought to check it out. It might be them. First, you need to recognize there's something broken. Secondly, you need to recognize you can't realize you can't fix it. And thirdly and lastly, this should turn us to a passionate prayer. Pray that God would fix our heart. The God who discerns the thoughts and intents of our heart, who can take a cold, hard heart in his nice, warm hands and massage that heart like those surgeons have done when they've had open heart surgeries and that heart seemed to not be working right. They reached their hands in there. Now I read about this. It was founded out in the 1800s. They started doing this kind of stuff sometimes to massage the heart, to try to get it going. And they brought it back just a few years back. They started this thing and trying to figure out that, listen, those warm hands massaging that cold, hard heart can get that blood flowing. You get it pumped a little bit. They pump on it a little bit softly and tenderly. But Jesus is calling. Oh, he's coming. So they're talking about he reaches inside and takes that old heart of stone and makes it pliable. It makes it movable. It makes it flow with that living of blood of Christ flowing through you and in you as Christ becomes dominant in your life. And your heart becomes because he can fix it. It's the heart that's not fixed, that's not fixated, is fixable. There's not a heart out there that's not fixable. There's not a heart out there that God cannot fix. Good. Good. Even if it's been hard to the deceitfulness of sin, even if they've been turned over to a reprobate mind, God's not worried about their mind. He's working on their heart. Amen. Come on. My son, give me that heart. And if God fixes that heart, guess what? Pure blood will flow into their mind. How? Mm -hmm. That's the work of grace. Yes, sir. A work that we cannot work up, but something that God of all grace desires to do in order that He might fix our heart upon Him. That he might fix our heart upon his person. That our focus might be Christ. My heart is fixed on thee, O oh God. My heart is fixed. That our heart will be fixed on him. That our heart will be fixed on his power. That how good God is. And that he can do all things. And because he can do all things, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. I can endure hardness as a good soldier. I can weep for those who are my enemies and pray for them with despite me. My heart's fixed on His person. My heart's fixed on His power. My heart's fixed on His preciousness. To them that believe, He is precious. I'd ask you this morning, get your heart fixed. If your heart's not fixed, go to Him that can fix the broken heart. Can heal the broken heart. Oh, that dwells in a high and holy place with Him that is our contrite and the Spirit. Revive the heart of the contrite. Let God fix your heart so that your heart is fixed on Him. That you might praise Him. You might sing unto Him with all your heart. And that we don't make slack this long. My friend, how's your heart today? How's your heart today? Did you have heart? My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine for thee all the follies 